Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet. Thanks to the marvel of technology, I'm coming at you live from a little guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, and you're listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement, the transformation station and radio for the soul. Metaphysics returns to Memphis August 5th and 6th at the Agri International Center in Memphis, Tennessee for the Memphis Metaphysical Fair. The Memphis Metaphysical Fair will play host to psychic mediums, tarot card readers, crystal and stone healers, and vendors, Native American motif. Wow, that's going to be cool. Paranormal investigating and 20 workshops over the two days. And that's August 5th and 6th at the Agri Center in Memphis. I am going to have a booth there um, as well as do a presentation on radical transformation. I'm very confident in my ability to get into your field and metaphorically push a few buttons and have you pop open and get a glimpse of the bigger reality. And that wow factor is going to be motivating for you to begin to do the work that I will be offering through this presentation of Radical Transformation. It's a $10 for one day event adult pass and $16 for both days. Military discounts are available. Children under 12 are free. Workshops range from 0 to $10 each. Vendor booths are still available. Visit MemphisMetaphysical.com for more information. Kenneth Pass, recent guest on Center of Light Radio. Many years ago when he was a young boy, he was abducted by aliens and brought back 10,000 years. If you're familiar with Prophecy Rock, uh, the people you've seen coming out of a craft on Prophecy Rock, Kenneth says, and I tend to believe him, that he is one of those people and those petroglyphs. And what we're doing, Kim, Kenneth is a very simple kind of cat. We're raising money and we, we're having some success to get him a, a bus ticket back to Arizona so he could find his hidden and alien technology that he confiscated from one of the aliens that really pissed him off. And he buried it into a cave or wherever it is. And he wants to go back and get this artifact so he could bring it to the Hopi and the Pueblo. And he's going to log his journey and come back and for a part Part two of Center of Light Radio to tell us about his experience on the road with that. You go to centeroflightradio.com. There's a lot of moving stuff happening, but once the page settles, you'll see a flying saucer. <laughs> and then you'll see a donate button. Anything you can offer. Our goal is to raise $500. We're almost there. $500 so you can get a bus ticket to and fro and have some food to eat. I would appreciate that. And so with, so with Kenneth. In September, check this out. This man right here, this divine man, Swamji Visva Yogi, God-realized man from India, is returning to Memphis, and he's granting me yet again, I am such a blessed man to be in a powerhouse, is experienced like this. Uh, for another interview, and the show, the I think his tour is called Healing the Earth by Purifying the Waters. So my gig is I have to come up with some pretty solid questions. Uh, there's lots of questions I'd like to ask about myself. You know, you're speaking to God, right? <laughs> but that's not the way. Of, that's not how I function when I do these interviews with um, God Realized Man, Swamji Viswa Yogi. Um, piece of information for you about who he is. He was the first divine energy to set foot on the planet, however many thousands upon thousands of years ago. This is his, his ninth incarnation as Swamji Viswayogi. My guest today is Russell Forsyth. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He is a certified angel therapist who trained under, wow, I didn't see that, under Dr. Doreen Virtue. Um, and been in service as an energy healer practitioner since 2006. Russell also teaches classes and workshops and has developed a comp comprehensive training program for energy healers. Following angelic guidance, he invented a unique crystal light table for use in energy healing sessions. Over the years, Russell has written a number of books, has appeared on many radio shows, and has selected to film a pilot TV show on angel readers. Russell currently writes a weekly newsletter called... Angel Whispers, which features a word study and channeled messages from the angels. You can find more about my guest tonight at www.russellforsythe.com. And that is www.russellforsythe.com. 
S Y T H dot com. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, Mr. Russell Forsyth. Glad to be here, Keith. Thanks for having me on your show today. It's really exciting for me. I'm glad you are here, sir. Uh, you and I went through one hell, heaven, heck of a dance today <laughs> about getting this new technology. Uh, so, listening audience, I just want to say off the top that uh, uh, Center of Light Radio, as well as Inception Radio Net, we're going through a lot of changes. Skype is being upgraded, and the learning curve is. It can be something to deal with, and so I pre- we appreciate your patience while we go through this transformation period. Uh, Russell, I was really impressed when you came, highly recommended by a friend of ours, um, Sikorsky. Uh, Amy. Amy, yes. Yeah. I loved her interview on Center of Light Radio. And I started watching some of these really cool videos and doing some research, uh, even through, through my busy schedule, about what you're doing with these crystal light tables. Let's at least start there. Tell me about this program of crystal light healing. Well, um, the program or the table, which would you like to hear about? Oh, I, I thought, my bad. You, st- you walked me through beginning to end in the process and the sequential order that it needs to be um, brought about. Well, on my way out to a training program with Dr. Dorn Virtue, I was still a general contractor, and I was going through my own healing crisis looking for answers to life like many of us do. And uh, I read this book called Goddesses and Angels, and in that book, she, uh, Dorian Virtue described her own crystal light bed healing, and I got fascinated by it. And uh, the first person I met uh, and walked around the workshop with turned out to be the person that gave her, that was the practitioner for her crystal light table experience and um, I connected with that I was on her light table and um, while I was on her light table I started getting blueprints uh, in my mind about how to build my own light table and when I got through that session the only thing she she said to me was Russell you're going to be involved with a new technology and I said is that a light table she said "I, I can't tell you any more than what I just did. And so I was uh, impatient and in a hurry, and I found a manufacturer that made uh, crystal light tables, offered him $8,000, and they promptly refused and said, we're not going to build you a table, and we're not even going to tell you why. So um, I was uh, really disappointed, uh, to say the least. And um, I came back to my home in Austin, Texas, and I started going over these blueprints I was seeing in my mind's eye and spent 15 months in the basement of a historic house uh, designing and building the first uh, one of my light tables, which has gone through a few generations to get to this point here today. I saw the video, and I love the fact that you had this LED light with this crystal that was harnessing, yet channeling the power of said light into the top of people's heads. Was that was that on purpose, or in the crown chakra, or is, or there different focal points that you use, or is it always on the top of the head? It's always on the top of the head. Sometimes I use an extra crystal on the body, depending on what we're working on. But the, uh, I studied the work of Dr. Marcel Vogel, who was a spiritual scientist for IBM, and um, he developed a, uh, the, uh, a lot of the crystal healing technology for today. And the practitioner um, uses the intent of the, of the person on the table to run energy through the crystal at an extremely high rate into the crown chakra, delivering, um, in some cases, cellular change throughout the entire body. And that's, that's what it's doing uh, where, with, its, with, it, uh, with its mounting. Russell, you said channeling the practitioner's intention. When, when the question I'm, I'm searching for in my mind is, I don't think you just basically turn on a pretty light and channel it through a put it through a crystal, and or maybe you do shove your intention into the light. Is that what you're doing? It's or actually the client's intention, and um, they they speak to the practitioner about what their intention is, and the uh, practitioner charges the crystal with breath and intention and then delivers that while the while the client's on the light table um, you know crystals are delivery mechanisms they're transducers they are um, many computers uh, they're memory devices and they um, take energy of thought through the mind and through energy of the heart to create us a, a circular flow of energy that comes in the female side of the crystal and is delivered through the male side of the crystal right into the crown chakra. It's quite an experience. How do you go about determining what's the male and the female side of the crystal? 
Well, there's that's pretty much uh, an easy uh, part of the crystal technology. For the most part, um, the female side is the um, smaller side, and the male side is the larger side. And, and that's in terms of um, angles, too. They're different angles. So, obviously, the color that you're using on the light has a great variance or a great purpose on what you're healing, why you're healing, and where you're directing the energy. So, the, does the color of the light source play a role in the healing of the individual? It does. It's, it's basically using a full-spectrum light to deliver rainbow light. Um, but the light does change, and it, it not only goes through the crystal, but it washes the entire body. The ancient Egyptians were using chromotherapy, and so were the Romans, to deliver light from the sun through the body for balance and for wellness. And it's an ancient um, modality that we, we brought up into modern technology. So it's really twofold. It's washing the, the body with light, but it's also delivering light through the crystal tip from the chat room dd says exactly what you said right before you spoke it i think it's particularly an ancient technology that used to have much more power um, he's right on target so yeah. i've heard in my long ago past um when i was considering doing light therapy that you never use green for treating someone with cancer because green promotes growth, or is that different in this case? No, it's not different. That's a really good point. You have the practitioner needs to be fairly skilled at um, uh, determining if there is a harmful element to what's being delivered. Um, in some cases, red is not a good color um, for cancer either. Uh, but the, the table also has a magnetic therapy in it um, built into the table and very strong magnets, which is great for pain, it's great for circulation, it's great for energy movement. But for people with severe illnesses, uh, it can be detrimental. So there is a, a level of discernment that goes in with the use of the table. Um, and also, uh, someone with a pacemaker uh, or an electronic implant or even hearing aids uh, would not do well around magnets. So, uh, in the case that we're using that, we can adjust and, and the, the lighting device is programmed with several different programs. Some of, it, some of the programs are just white light. And um, we cover the magnets and we use a device to test to make sure the magnet energy is not coming through if that is a problem or an issue for the client. When you became impregnated with the idea that you're going to have this new technology coming to through you, the light table, the crystal therapy, and all this stuff, what year was this, or how long ago was this? 2006. 2006. So 2000, between 2006 and the recent past, were you learning about color therapy, light therapy, learning that you do not use green in certain cases, red in certain cases? So. What kind of schooling was involved with this for you? Well, actually, that's a really good question, Keith. Um, what happened with me was that I was virtually 15 months in the basement of a house building this device uh, without any knowledge of it whatsoever. It was strictly channeled messages. And after I built the device and, you know, my wife said, asking me, hey, Russell, how do you know that thing's even going to work? And, you know, I'm going, well, <laughs> I, I'm not sure, but I, I have a feeling it is. Um, but after I, I did the work, I started doing some research after I built the table, and it amazed me that a lot of the information I channeled was very accurate in terms of, of uh, ancient modalities and how they work. Uh, so uh, I, the other day I saw a quote from somebody that said, too much research is, is uninspiring. And um, I, I kind of you know, I'm a musician like you, Keith, and what I found out is that if I listened to too many people's music, that it, it really polluted my own um, creativity. And so I, I generally do a lot of channeling and get the information, and then I follow it up with a little bit of research just to verify what I'm getting. I totally get that, Russell. What, by the way, what do you play? Sing guitar, bass, drums, what? I, I was a guitar player for a long time, but I eventually turned to an instrument called the mando cello. And, um, wow, sounds yeah. interesting. I'd love, to, yeah, I'd love it, to learn more about that. The Mando Cello is a, um, uh, I had a custom one made on a tenor guitar body, but it's, it's four sets of double strings tuned like a cello uh, on a guitar body. So it's uh, uh, sometimes called the instrument of the angels like the harp. 
and it's an old world instrument. It used to be the bass instrument of the mandolin family. So I was going to say when we're talking about music, how like you, I've listened to everything. When I realized I want to be a musician, I listen to Sticks, Journey, Boston, Van Halen. I listen to classical, I listen to everything. I've learned theory, and I got to a point to where I kept applying theory, and I said, you know what, this is just inform- this is just someone else's way of doing it. But now that I've quote mastered my instrument. I took all that stuff and threw it in the garbage. I no longer need it. In fact, before I knew theory, if I hit a certain note in passing, it would be what we call a blue note, a bad note, right? And now that I've learned the theory and I throw all that away, I can hit notes that may be seen, at least from someone's perspective, as a mistake. But now I know how to correct it. I know how to say that. That was just a little bit of my jazz influence, right? But, yeah, I, I, I no longer listen to music. I cannot. I, in fact, it's not enjoyable for me to hear today's music. I don't. When I get in a car, people say, what do you listen to when you get in a car? I say, I don't. It's the last thing I want is more music. Yeah, well, then you understand what I'm talking about. I think we can be compromised with our own creativity when we're when we're trying to follow the footsteps of someone else. It's, it's like you say, it's great when you're learning and you're trying to understand what other people are doing. But once you've mastered an instrument, I think you want to be fully creative. And that's that's kind of the light table, too. Once I, I, I mastered it, I wanted to you know create even more with it. From the chat room. DD, uh, I always keep calling him Don Danny, but it's Don Dan. It's 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 just shortcut. But uh, I'm sure he's forgiven me. He asked a question. He says most people don't know that quartz has pyramidal ends and may be the reason why they formed pyramids. Are there particular crystals associated with each chakra? Uh, there are there are certain crystals that. Um are associated with them and and by the way the initial cuts of marcel vogel the tips were cut to 51 degrees you know 51 minutes 51 seconds like the great pyramid of giza so there is a connection to the pyramid cut and some of the cutters we use insist on keeping the uh, angles of the cuts the same as found in nature. But to, to his question, maybe I could speak to a little bit. You know, if you used a scale of zero to ten, zero the least and ten being the most, a raw crystal programmed for nature, uh, programmed by nature for the area, for the trees, for the water, for the birds uh, and the animals, that might run an, like a level one or two into the chakras. These uh, high-powered um, cut devices, cut with intention, cut for purpose, cut with very specific um, uh, measurements, are uh, will run like a level nine or ten amount of energy. So people that get around these crystals can sense them and feel them immediately. So when you got one directed into your crown, uh, it can it can take you out of the body pretty quick. Hook me up. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, <laughs> so you're basically only using crystals, any certain particular quartz, any particular crystal, quartz crystal, quartz crystal, mixed with a little bit of that, a little, a little bit of aquamarine. What exactly are you using to harness this power? Mostly electronic grades quartz crystal. So electronic grade is, they're, they're harder and harder to find, believe it or not, but they're completely clear. And they have no uh, inclusions, no nothing inside of them. So they they don't disturb the movement of energy going through them. But uh, as of as of late, we have been using some uh, smoky quartz, uh, some citrine, uh, and um, some some amethyst and ametrine and rose quartz. And we've been using those and noticing there is a different delivery with those different types of crystals. In some cases, the non-electronic grades quartz crystals are a little smoother on the energy run because those uh, high energy can affect a sensitive person, um, you know, in a way that's pretty dramatic. I've seen some pretty dramatic results or responses on the light table. So it's sort of like turning the dimmer on the light switch down a little bit so it's just not so raw and so robust. Exactly, exactly. You know, you know about transformation, Keith. So when when people come in with a strong intention to transform themselves and they're getting something out of their body, um, you know, there's a few times I thought my neighbor was going to call the police because there was some pretty large screaming and responses for people pulling out addictions and pulling things out of their body that was – you know, uh, it, it it was quite um, painful for some people, but the transformation effect was uh, uh, um, permanent. 
You know, what came to mind, and I don't want to get like far out uh, ghost story and demonic, but what came to mind is I've often in my past, maybe you have, have as well, we've always seen articles or what talks about addiction as having demons, having attachments, right? Mm-hmm. So my thought is, if these are dark entities being attached to whatever client and you saturating the system with light that maybe some of these verbal expulsions that are coming out or somewhat channeled from these uh, attachments actually saying, you know, this, this crap burns. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, well, I just took a shot in the dark, brother. No, well, you're on to something. Because, uh, in my training program, one of the sections is around spirit releasement. And this is where a disincarnate spirit has um, attached itself to a person, which does cause addictions. These um, are, you know, as long as there's religion and um, uh, different philosophies, there will always be discussion about demons. But what I've found is these are lost souls, people that never went into the light. And I have found um, thousands of them embedded in one person's energy and what, and, and had an experience with those coming out of the body while we do this work. And it is, it can be quite, uh, an experience, and you might be interested to know, since you brought it up, Keith, that um, uh, probably 50% of the people that I see have these in their system. It's not uncommon, um, not an uncommon experience at all. Is it more to the degree of how much they have their hooks in you? Because everyday, normal, good, decent people uh, could likely have, you know, a couple of fears here and there, and they may be a leech attached to that particular portal where that said fear may seep from. So in your work of helping these people, um, do you ever feel uh, a presence, like, you know, that you know what you need to remove, or is it just, you know, the person has uh, asthma and you're doing that, but do you ever feel anything? Have you ever felt anything of something being really, really dense? Oh, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, as soon as I started this work, I had to go back for more training with Dorian Virtue to become a medium and to do the advanced teachings. Uh, and I am clairvoyant. I not only see them, but I sense them. I feel them. And when I'm operating the light table and I'm watching them come out of the body and stand there right next to me, it's, it is quite an experience. Uh, we can communicate with them. We can feel them. We can sense them. And now that I've been doing this for such a long period of time, I usually can talk to a person for five minutes on the phone or as soon as they walk in my space and tell immediately if that's the case. There's a definite negative vibration in the room that goes along with it. From the chat room, Nazca Quartz is famous worldwide for its connective capabilities. We use them in computer hardware. Uh, is this anything that you're familiar with and use in your own work? Yes. As a matter of fact, we have two world-class lapidary artists that are well, well-renowned for their work in crystal cutting. And uh, they, they both are very different. But um, one of them that we work with in particular is uh, has uh, connections with mines all over the world, crystal mines all over the world. Get some, uh, can get them from just about any country and any area and hand selects them for his use for cutting. Um, as a matter of fact, he's a very interesting person and he connects with the crystal and gets communication from the crystal as to how to cut it. Uh, he once had a $30,000 piece of crystal rock that said, I don't want to be healer, a healer. I don't want to work with people. I want to go back in the ground. And he took it out and buried it. What comes to mind, Russell, is I remember a couple of years ago, I did a house cleaning for someone who had some pretty negative energies happening in there, and they were, they were beginning to manifest. And a friend of mine here, a guest on Center of Light Radio, Madra Gale Litter, she is a stone smith. Oh, my God, she's amazing. She uh, suggested to me, I think it's called selenite? Selenite? Yes. That's to help lift the energy to remove bad beings from your house. If that's the case, if someone is possessed, or has trouble, and if we always attract to us said boogeyman ghost demons, if we you if you was to use selenite to harness the light energy to help correct the shortcoming in a person to no longer attract that energy, or let's say for example topaz or citrine that might help this part of the person's body or. Amethyst may help this person's part of the body. It seems, though I'm not a crystal light table practitioner, it seems to me, and it makes sense to me, let's say, for example, if 
a certain particular stone works with this particular part of the body, that you would use said stone to filter the light that you are bringing into the person's body that would balance out the harmonic, the vibration. Well, I see your point, and I think that's true to an extent, but I will say part of it's my theory. Experience, it's in theory. <laughs> part of my experience was that um, we could bring in different crystals that would actually increase the chaotic flow of energy. It would not be smooth. It would be very chaotic. But actually, you might... Keith, you might be interested in this. The The most effective way to balance energy and to create um, uh, a release, if there is an attachment there, is the use of sound. And that's part of the crystal light table. We use uh, uh, frosted singing bowls, uh, which is a main element of the light table. And it really does, you know, as soon as I start playing those bowls, uh, you know, they're, they're out of there. And what the crystal does is it puts light back in the body because wherever anything has been removed, there's a dark spot there. So there's a void, and we have to fill that light. But, you know, something else I've noticed, Keith, I think you're, you're talking about is that if a person's energy field, their bioenergetic field is, is tight and clear, Nothing can intrude upon their sovereignty. It's only when a person has holes and tears in their energy field that can create an opening for anything to get into it. So that's that's a result of trauma or the result of contracts um, and agreements to learn um, and grow that uh, uh, some people are unknowingly inviting these into their system. Yeah, definitely unknowingly. When I was just talking about Madrigal Little, I was going to continue, but I didn't. I remember some time back last year, year and a half ago, I went to Madra's office here in Memphis. And when she brought me into the room, she was going to do a crystal bowl um, ceremony on me. And I sat in this chair, and under this chair was every kind of, my God, powerful crystal imaginable. And when I sat in this chair, it felt like the space shuttle under my ass. It was it was on fire. And then she started resonating these bowls. And I was brought to a cave, and so was she. Brought to a cave, and there were a couple of masters in there. And we began a dialogue. And everything she imparted to me in this session did come true up until this day. That's for sure. But my point is, I know the power and the magic and the door that opens up by the use of uh, these singing bowls. It's truly amazing for me. Yeah, and and the light table is that the the um, what makes it unique as an energy device is that it combines the elements of chromotherapy, crystal therapy, magnetic therapy, sound vibrational therapy, and built into the table is the trade secret. It's got a unique um, aspect to it underneath the table. No one ever sees it. That is a portal, and it opens that portal to the other dimensions. And just like you just mentioned, uh, some people call it my spaceship. Some people book a session and say, I want to get on the spaceship, and I want to do some traveling. Russell, we're at the bottom of the hour. Would you give us your contact information so our listening audience can find out more about you and this phenomenal new technology you're bringing forth? And you can bet I'm going to be doing some more research about what you're doing, sir. Yeah, www.russellforsyth.com is my main website. I have Facebook pages on the Forsyth Crystal Light Table and on the IEL Institute, which we just opened earlier this year, and that's www.iel-institute.com. And it's a free membership platform where you can access free videos, meditations, and if you want, you can do some training with us as well. Uh, Amy, you mentioned, uh, she's a certified teacher with us. We have a couple of certified teachers and mentors tours in the program and uh, we're just starting to we're just starting this this thing up and you know Keith part of what happened with me was I built this device and then I then a part of me said I don't even have a user's manual with it you know I don't even know how to tell people how to use it so I started developing the training program to feel a little bit more grounded about uh, getting this, these tables out there in the world Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio to remind you about my lifelong work, RPM, Recognize, Plug In, and Manifest Your Life. Let me ask you a few questions. What is it you want out of your life? You want more financial stability? You want relationship? You want greater degrees of bliss, conscious expansion, and spiritual evolvement? 
These are magnificent, wonderful things, and I have achieved all of these by implementing what I am offering to you so you can apply this to your life so you can have all those things that you truly desire and truly deserve. I absolutely guarantee my work 100%. Go to Center of Light Radio, look at the opening page, the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Not only will you receive my awesome Power Pack newsletter monthly, but you will have access to my RPM program. Stay in touch with me, and I will send you everything I'm about, all my successful works. You can bet. All you have to do is contact me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at gmail.com. Peace, love, and light to you always. You are a busy man out in the field, aren't you? Yeah, oh, yeah. You love I every see, moment of it, don't you? I see 900 people a year <laughs> one-on-one, and I do trainings and workshops, and uh, it's it's a beautiful life. It's it. Uh, I never thought as a contractor I would be going into this world, I'll tell you that. So, A lot of people don't understand, or maybe just never come across of it, um, the power inherent in sound. People often wonder, how did they get those monolith rocks up there in Tibet when you, you, can't, you can't barely even find a path to walk up there? How did they get these stones up there to build these Tibetan Buddhist monasteries? Russell, tell them how. Vibrations. It's all about the vibe, man. <laughs> it's about sound. It's all about the vibe, yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> I've, I've got a musician that told me that he sits behind the drum kit and he – he takes pictures periodically, and before the gig starts, it's just a black room, and when the gig ends, it's filled with orbs. And his his view is that when we're listening to music, we're bringing in our ancestors. We're bringing in the spirit. That's why we leave a concert, and we feel good, because we, we felt that vibe. And I just... I really feel like that that we're more powerful than we think we are and that, you know, there's things we can accomplish uh, just with our mind and heart that we we don't even realize. And part of that is just a lift uh, of energy. And I do think through vibrational lift, we could uh, accomplish the things that we see on this planet. Have you seen a video on YouTube? And for listening audience out there, if you get the opportunity, take the opportunity. Um, go to YouTube and look up how sound creates form. And when you find this video, you will see a sound plate, a square sound plate, say two and a half, three feet square. And there's a speaker mounted underneath, and they run a tone, and all they do is throw white salt or sand on this table. And as the frequency begins to elevate, this sand begins to make geometric shapes right and so i'd say I, I dare to take that further because every sound we hear like hearing my voice or whatever it is you're hearing on some level there is a geometric shape associated with that sound that being said sound does create form because when i play music people do form in the club and they eventually form on the dance floor so yes. there's something <laughs> and sound is what holds everything in the universe together. It's the glue. It's everything that, it just holds everything in a nice tight package. You're absolutely right. As a matter of fact, I use that video in my classes when I'm teaching about sound vibration, and I love it because it does, it lets you see sound. And, and w what I found out is that the note C, for example, if, we, if you and I could see that note traveling across the room, it would look red because that's the vibration that it holds. If we saw a D note, it would be orange. And so every vibration has its own form. And when I was recording those bowls, what I saw was a straight line that would move and then turn into a ball and then go down and turn into a ball. It's a moving ball that goes across the room that can hit us in a way that brings our mind to a different brainwave state, to alpha and to theta brainwaves and that's another reason we like music because it balances our brain yeah completely so f would be the heart chakra is that correct 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 so in each chakra has one of the seven colors of the rainbow and each chakra has one of the seven notes of the major scale in the musical scale Absolutely. And, and, and as above so below we are made of light and sound yeah. 
Correct. Uh, from, the, from the chat room. Um, just recently, scientists are thinking the Earth's core is not molten iron, which I would probably agree with. I'm not a scientist, but uh, intuitively. But is magnetized linear crystal and have also found that the human body is also made of crystal. Well, yeah, it's, it's all crystalline structure. Yeah, Dr. Marcel Vogel, who was the scientist that had free reign of the lab uh, in IBM, 27 years, they never gave him anything to do. He experimented with these things, and when he saw um, some brain material that had dried, it was all crystalline. And crystals make up uh, they're the second most abundant uh, element of the Earth, and the first is oxygen. So it is a we, it is a crystalline structure, and we are indigenous of this planet. So of course we're crystalline structures ourselves. You know, it makes sense to me. We talk about decalcifying the pineal, decalcifying. There has to be some sort of crystal crystalline structure there as to why we're breaking up these things uh, into bits. Hopefully that we can dissipate it around our our third eye, our pineal gland. And you know what can decalcify uh, uh, that is the sun. So we can take the waves of the light from the sun right into the top of our head and we can, you know, increase our wellness in that way. So it's really all about light and sound. Yeah, that's the gig. I have a, I have a guest coming on, uh, Center of Light Radio, I think it's July, the last week in July. How's that? Whatever that date is, July 31st, possibly. His name is Daryl Braun. And I stuck out my intention to the universe. I want to interview someone who does breatharianism. And here comes Daryl. <laughs> so he's going to heads up listening audience. Now it's going to be hard for you to don't wrap your mind around it. Wrap your heart around it. That's the only way you're going to get it. He's going to be on the show, and the subject's going to be about breatharianism and sun gazing. That he does not have to eat food ever, 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 never, ever again for sustenance. People say, "Well, that's crazy. You would die." Well, if you think about it, the sunlight grows the grass, which the cows eat, uh, or grows the plants that you're going to eat, and you take it in that way. So, But once you begin to fill the chambers of the brain with light through the ritual that is prescribed, don't just get out there and start gazing at the sun and burn out your retinas. Uh, and so once you follow this program, in 21 days, you will become light activated. Your spine will be filled with light, and you no longer need to eat unless you want to do it for social reasons, have a little bit of water, a little bit of fruit or nuts kind of thing. But it's no longer required to have physical sustenance to sustain yourself. I love the subject, and there is a man who's who's uh, been a breatharian for 30 years, and he's proven that you do not have to have food and that we can get sustenance in other ways. So I'm, I'm a strong fan of that subject. I'll be tuning into that show. So how did you begin to hear angels? I mean, were you in a, a life situation where things were just really bad and you had to surrender and you fell on your metaphorical spiritual knee like it took for me? Or were you had this vibe, this groove going on early in your life just by a natural outcome for you? Well, you know, people ask me that a lot. Was I sensitive as a child? And I worked in historic homes for over 35 years, won awards with the, my uh, restoration of those homes. And there was definitely an energy in those homes that you could sense and feel and sometimes hear. And, and that definitely helped me with my senses. But in the year 2000, a family secret came out. It was a 53-year-old family secret at the time that I had a brother given up at birth for adoption. And um, I had uh, four sisters and no brother. And my parents were divorced. And my mother told one story and my father told another. And um, the Leave It to Beaver family just turned into married with children. And we were the biggest fighting family you ever saw. And, um, and we just, <laughs> uh, you know, it sent me down the rabbit hole. I mean, I just thought my whole life was a lie. And, and um, it, it just really you know, threw me for a loop, and I started searching for the for the real answers to life. And in that search, I came across Doreen Virtue, and, and she had a book of prayers uh, to the angels. And as I started doing those prayers, I started hearing the whispers of them, really small, short at first, but then stronger and stronger. And so that's why I went to her workshop and, and started learning more. And in that workshop, I found out I had a little gift of making that connection, and that that's what I really took that to a, a further level. And and then for anyone that really wants is interested in, in that subject and wants to know more about how to do it, 
uh, I started in 2007 doing a weekly blog called the the, the Angel Whispers, where I channel a message, and um, I've done it every week since over uh, 500 weeks now that I've done it. And what came to me even recently, Keith, was it was a practice, just like practicing your your instrument, and and I realized that it was that practice that helped me improve my skills uh, to the point to where. Um, I can do it under extreme circumstances right now and do it on demand, uh, so to speak. But it's it's an art form, just like playing an instrument, where if you don't practice your instrument, you're not going to get that good at it. So are we all hearing, I would say yes, but are we all hearing actual angelic messages all the time, but that for many people there's just too much noise and that you went to school or some people go to school to learn how to differentiate between not only the noise, but the things that we hope would happen <laughs> compared to a real message. I think we do. I think we seamlessly do it at times where we're, we're channeling our ancestors, our angels, our guides, and it's coming into our head and we're going, is that my thought? Or we don't have the trust to, to, to know the difference. But after you and you, thank you, you'll right. appreciate this, Keith. After a while, you can differentiate between the vibration that's coming in your head. The vibration is different when it's outside of us, and you can tell the difference in that vibration. But the main thing, Keith, that I've found out about channeling the whispers of spirit is they're intelligent, and they're more intelligent than I am. So the intelligence of their message comes through in a way that gives you that aha moment. Oh, Wow, I could not have possibly thought about that myself. And then the other thing is the Akasha, which is what you you talked about earlier. The fabric of our universe holds every dream, every intention, every thought, every lifetime, past, present, and future. And we can access that record of our Earth. And that's where crystals come in, too, because they are the record keepers of our Earth. And so we can use them as, a, as an antenna to really access those records. But I think we do that seamlessly, too, where, where we don't realize we're accessing that history of our planet and of our lives. Supposedly, back in the Atlantean times, they would have crystals, and they'd take a crystal and put it up to their third eye, and they would send information in it. Now, uh, later down the road, someone found that crystal and put it in their third eye. They can retrieve that information just like it was a library. It, the crystals store information. The crystal you have in your phone that has you know, it, uh, a microchip, it's all crystals. Yeah, the crystal they use in Lanap surgeries to, to put light in your gums. You know, we're using crystals and weaponry for communication. We use crystals all the time. I do that with people, Keith. I put the, the crystal right up to their mind's eye and do a crystal clearing with them. And so it, it is something that activates energy and creates a... Uh, it's like putting, uh, it's like connecting on a phone line when you uh, do something like that. There's cautions, and you should do it with intent and, and uh, you know, with, a, with the power of discernment. But it is something that is a, um, a record of our, of our journey that we can access and, and find out more about who we are as people through the use of these devices. So if there was an actual physical brick-and-mortar building of the Akashic Hall of Records, and you can spiritually drive up to it and get out of your car, um, I would think this thing would be built out of crystal and all the information. You know, you want to find Russell Forsyth's file. Uh, you know, you walk down this hall, and there's a particular uh, still like of crystals and vice versa, right? Yeah, well, you, you'll like this, Keith. Uh, I had a client on my light table one time, and she was in a zone and doing her thing. She s stood straight up and looked at me and said, you know you've been in Atlantis. And I said, well, tell me more. She said, you were Stefano Otano. <laughs> Your name was Stefano Otano in Atlantis, and I go well. Thank you for that, but um, but you know I don't I don't know for sure anything like that. But I will tell you when I'm accessing the Akashic records, it's a lot like you describe. I go into a vast library and I go to a place where there's a book with my client's name on it, and the book opens and a little movie plays or a soundtrack comes out. Something shows up that helps me. It gives me information about that person. So that may be, you know, the Russell way of, of interpreta interpreting what's going on. But, but what you describe is really close to what I see. Wow. 
Uh, maybe I need to do some more work surrounding the Acoustic Hall of Records. I've done some. It's never been something I was really pulled in. As I'm not opposed to it. I, I love the idea of knowing that everything we do, everything that's that we likely could potentially do, it's all being recorded. It makes sense to me that everything is recorded. There's evidence for all time of everything that's ever happened. Uh, it's it's a beautiful idea to me. Yeah, and you know these crystals that we get, these electronic uh, quartz crystals. You know, when you start communicating, some of them will communicate that they're a million years old. And think about that as a record keeper of our Earth. It's layer after layer after layer, and what is in those layers. And it's it's very possible that we as human beings are the same way. We are made up of layer after layer after layer of the soul that takes on a human form through incarnation. And in each one of those layers, there is information that is valuable to us. And it's it's not as hard as some people make it out to be. I think the, the, the challenging thing is the trust that comes along with it. And, and one thing I liked about Dr. Marcel Vogel in his workshops, people would say, what do you think about phenomenon? And he would say, what's that? You know, it's all our experience. There's nothing of a phenomenon with it. It's just what we're experiencing in this in this life. Someone recently shared with me that there's a place in Nepal. If you were able to probably not be able to touch this book, but if a master monk was to open it up for you, it would show the entire log of your life to you actually looking. It will actually say you are looking at this book right now. I mean, it logs everything. Have you ever heard of anything like that, Russell? Well, just just uh, this weekend, I did a, a, a workshop on soul retrieval and on past lives and i did a meditation with everyone in the group and it was people that have been doing a lot of spiritual work and people that are just beginning on their journey almost every single one of them accessed their akashic records in the book of their soul and and what i think is some of these places on the earth are power places they they make it you know much easier to open up to those energies and that's why we have sacred places on this earth like stonehenge and and um you know the 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 different spiritual places on our earth because you know that those people from ancient times got a a lot of accurate information from those places so yeah i think it's uh you know you you hit one of those sacred places with a a crystal device like we use and and look out You'll you'll open up some information quick. I wonder what it'd be like to go to those any of those sacred places um, on ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, people people that experience light tables, some of them say it's like an LSD trip. Um, it's like you know, it's like doing drugs. Um, they travel other dimensions, and and part of my dream is to take these tables out to those sacred places and and you know go on a journey so uh, i can relate so what does the future look like for you sir as far as what you consciously know you're going to be bringing down the pipe well um i've got a seven level program that takes people from just the beginnings to an advanced uh, master's level of energy assessment i do think one day we will be working more closely with alter with the um, traditional medicine to provide alternative support. I'm already doing it now with a lot of people with severe illnesses and seeing great results. And um, uh, my hope is to get these light tables into uh, centers that are uh, working with traditional medicine and maybe even uh, doing something to um, uh, certify people in the area to work in harmony with, with modern medicine. I do think it's the medicine of the future. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I thought, you know, thought I was done after seven levels, but level eight's coming in right now, and I think it's going to revolve around spiritual DNA vibrations. That when we have a missing part of our energy that's a missing vibration, much like the bad note on a, on a piano keyboard, that we quit playing because that note sounds bad, I think that we can fill that note and help people um, evolve spiritually through a, a type of, of DNA at the soul level. And um, I've already been getting information about using wavelength frequencies to um, heal and, and uh, repair people's DNA. And, and I think that's also part of the future. But it's a, it's a little daunting because the information seems uh, pretty pretty um, 
full. There's a lot of information there to to access, but uh, I'm excited about it and and uh, looking forward to having time for it. So when you travel out of town, you do presentations, obviously. And, but I'm so I'm sure that after you do said presentation to explain what is happening, then people are signing up for the actual session. Yes, absolutely. Can I do a talk without people <laughs> saying I want to try that out? Yeah, I dig that. You know, how, not that you need my help, but however, I can help. You know, I do have a network of a large group of people who may be very, very interested who are doing energy work, Reiki, uh, crystal bowls, light therapy, but have not come across nor. Um, know who you are to be able to uh, be interested in learning your technique with such, such table. Well, I have a, a table in New York, have one in Australia, just put one in California, have New Mexico um, and Georgia and Texas. And what I would love to do is, is have someone with a network that would sponsor me just by, when I say sponsor, just putting out to their people and let me come in and do demonstrations and workshops and maybe even sessions for a week or so in, in your area. And uh, I would love, love to connect with you like that. Yeah, we can definitely be in touch. And I, I like, I have so many irons and so many fires. People say, how do you find time to do what you do, Keith? I say, well, when you do what you love, if love is eternal, time finds you. <laughs> you never work a day in your life. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Russell, uh, we are slowly but surely coming to the top of here. We still got a few more minutes. Is there something that uh, I might be leaving out that you might want to hit on before we get to the top of the hour? Well, I'd love for people to go to my website and, chi and uh, sign up for my weekly channeled uh, whisper. It's a uh, very short. Uh, it's about 500 words every week, and uh, I get a lot of great feedback from people on that, and it helps me connect with people, too. It's a free newsletter. It only comes out Sunday morning at 5.55 a.m. every Sunday. I don't inundate people with emails because I don't like to, that to happen to me. I only uh, have people that really sign up and want it. To, um, uh, to to receive it. I don't I don't like anyone that signs me up for something that I didn't agree to. So I'm I'm kind of uh, cautious about that. But I would love for people to do that and and to send me a note and tell me what they think about the channeling and and just connect with me that way. First note just came in. Dana from the chat room says, I'd love to do this. In fact, uh, I met Dana a couple of years ago, and since then um, she's got on a spiritual conscious walk. And she's learning spiritual healing technique after technique. She's doing Reiki. She's doing this. She's doing that. So she says, I would love to do that. I would probably bet that your email box is going to tickle your ear real soon. <laughs> well, I tell you what, she'll be happy to know that what the crystal light table is, it's a Reiki crystal grid for the human body. And it's a no-brainer device. And so there's, you don't even have to touch anybody. You just operate it. It's a really simple thing. And as the light tables get out there, they connect with each other. And they create a, a, a flow of love between practitioners. And so they get more powerful wow. the more we get out there. Wow, wow, I see, wow. I, I that, see right. There, there, there become sentient conscious beings. Be, right. Dig that. Exactly. I saw the light bulb go off. Yeah, it's, yeah, right, yeah, right. It's all one energy, and so yeah. this one is resonating, and this one is resonating. You know, like I say, um, what's the, what's the uh, uh, resonance? Uh, sympathetic resonance. You play a guitar, you play an A chord on a guitar, and there's a guitar over there on the stand, and no one's touching it. The A string on that guitar begins to vibrate. Yes. So same thing would be true across the you know like vibrations resonate each other, and they all begin to illuminate and begin to harmonize. There's a word. Right. It travels across the ma magnetic domain that surrounds this earth to connect. And we just realized that they that this is what's happening, that, that they're getting more more power as we have more people using them. So we need some more. We need more on the East Coast or in the eastern part of the U.S. for sure. Do you ever come through the Mid-South Memphis way? Um, I have, but it, it, it's been a while since I've. Since I've done that, I used to travel a little more before I did the light table work because I'm so busy with sessions. But uh, I, it's time for me to get out there and do more demonstrations. I'm about to get out in the, the field myself, Russell. It's been something I've been wanting to do for many years. Um, I, I'm a full-time musician, so I'm trying to find the right way to balance moving from full-time musician to full-time, most-time uh, author presentation teacher kind of guy, um, but I will always play music. That's where my heart is, but I'm really wanting to move into the field. So maybe at some point you and I can dialogue and maybe you can give me some pointers about how to actually do that and make my transition a little more smoother. 
Have you ever been to Austin, Texas? It looks like I'm coming. Hey, <laughs> it's a music I, I, town I, I, for one thing, and it's a good place to promote your book for another. So, I tell you what, that might be a good. Uh, let, let, let me think about that because I have a dear friend in Austin. Uh, he has a phenomenal band called Del Castillo. It's oh, a yeah. It's a progressive flamenco band. If you ever get the chance, and you want to be wild, go watch the two brother guitar plays. It will just level you. I've Phenomenal. Heard. Yeah, Del Castillo. Uh, we are at the top of the hour, my friend, my brother, my new uh, guest who I really enjoyed the show. Would you give out your contact information once more and leave us with a final thought, please? Okay. Uh, you all are the website, RussellForsyth.com, the IEL Institute. We're on Facebook with the Forsyth Crystal Light Table and the IEL. We have a Crystal Store, Crystal Light and Sound. Our number is 512-999-8478. And there is an astral bridge that connects from our heart to the spiritual plane. In order to stand on that bridge, you have to pass through the fire of the heart. And what keeps you from having fear is trust. And if you have that, you can channel any being at any time. Just trust yourself. Pass through the fire, stand on that bridge, and enjoy your life. That was pretty juicy, man. I, I've always said that, like it, it very differently, but I love that you resounded that, is that the stargate is the heart. Yes. And the password is responsibility. Yes. Right? And yeah. when, you, when you can sign into that login form, login form, the internet, internet sole provider lets you in. <laughs> I, dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I really enjoyed your time with me, sir. It was I've a pleasure it too, to, Keith. to know you for sure. Um, I'm going to be sending you some information soon about everything we talked about, as well as uh, uh, the archive of this video. So thank you for being here on Center of Light Radio. This guy rocks. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We really appreciate it. Enjoy Very connecting much with you. so. Uh, next week on Center of Light Radio, my guest is going to be D. Patrick Miller. Um, he came very highly recommended. I don't have the notes in front of me what the show is going to be about, but you can bet that my guest here on Center of Light Radio or quality. I'm about quality. Joe and I had a conversation in the Green Miller earlier about quality. <laughs> and also keep in mind, August 5th and 6th. Memphis Metaphysical Fair, I'm going to be doing a talk about radical transformation. I'll push that button, pop you open. I'll, I will help activate your peripheral awareness. Trust me. It's not cocky. Well, you can call it what you like, as long as it works, right? And also in September, Swamji Viswayogi, God Realized Man from India. I had the blessed opportunity to have this man rub me on my spine and activate some of my kundalini. And when you're around a being like this, it's not something to be said. It's about something to be felt. And <laughs> your life will change. Center of Light Radio, every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I am your host, Keith Anthony Blanche. When you lay down at night, you have nothing to do. You might as well breathe. Well, Keith, I breathe all the time. Breathe on purpose. Breathe with the intention to punch through the ceiling of thought. And when you do, the universal profound deafening silence will engulf you. And your life will change. And you will know the path. Peace, love, and light. Good night.